Good evening. How's everybody tonight? Uh, thank you all for being here tonight. I had several phone calls this afternoon of uh, folks that were not able to be here. They, they were uh, still battening down the hatches, and uh, uh, we certainly got a little bit of rain coming our way, and, and that's okay. Cool things off a little bit. How about that? Amen. But uh, we are here tonight, and uh, evening worship service, and looking forward to Mackenzie and Michael coming in just a few minutes, and uh, sharing with the <coughs> sharing with us about their mission trip. So I uh, look forward to that. Uh, I'm excited about that, and I know that the Lord has done some great things, not only through y'all, but but through the entire group from Swanee County that went up there, and, and uh, so look forward to that. All right, if you would let's stand, and we'll go to our Lord in prayer. And then ask Brother Lauren to come and uh, lead us in our worship tonight. Let's pray. Father God, we do thank you for the day that you've given to us, Lord, another time and opportunity to come back into your house and to worship you. Father, tonight as we lift up our voices in song and, and uh, we pray for Michael and Mackenzie as they come and share with us their testimony of, uh, of what you have done through them and uh, through the whole group that uh, from Swanee County that went up and, and uh, to Idaho and other places around and uh, doing your work, Lord, expanding the kingdom of heaven. God, we thank you for all things, and we pray tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Good evening. evening. Our call to worship this evening is found on page 333, leaning on the everlasting arms. <laughs> What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace of mind, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all of Leaning on the everlasting arms, leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms, leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms, I have blessed peace with my Lord so near. Leaning on the everlasting arms, leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Next Sam 337, if you follow along, I know whom I believed. <laughs> in love redeemed me for his own but I know whom that I believe in and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day I know now how the saving faith to me he did impart, nor how believing in his word wrought peace within my heart. But I know whom that I believe in, and am persuaded that he is able to keep that 
which I've committed unto him against that day. I know not how the Spirit moves, convincing me in the sin, revealing Jesus through the Word, creating faith in him. But I know who that I believe in and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. I know not when my Lord may come at night or noonday fair, nor if I walk the veil with him or meet him in the air. But I know whom that I believe in and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I committed unto him against that day. So how many red skins and brown skins people did you see, huh? A lot, huh? You can't tell the difference, though, <laughs> until they start. <laughs> Our final hymn this evening is found on page 340, He Hideth My Soul. A wonderful Savior is Jesus my Lord, a wonderful Savior to me. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock, where rivers of pleasure I see. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock that shadows a dry, thirsty land. He hideth my life in the depths of his love and covers me there with his hand. And covers me there my Lord, he taketh my burden away. He holdeth me up and I shall not be moved. He giveth me strength as my day. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock that shadows a dry, thirsty land. He hideth my life in the depths of his love and covers me there with his hand and covers me there with his hand. With numberless blessings each moment and he crowns and filled with his fullness divine. I sing in my rapture, oh glory to God for such a redeemer as mine. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock that shadows a dry, thirsty land. That hideth my life in the depths of his love and covers me there with his hand. And covers me there with his hand. When clothed in his brightness, transported I rise to meet him in clouds of the sky. His perfect salvation, his wonderful love, I'll shout with the millions on high. He hides my 
my soul in the cleft of the rock that shadows a dry, thirsty land. He hideth my life in the depths of his love and covers me there with his hand. And covers me These young people are strangers to us. They've been around here for a little while. And um, this is y'all's first mission trip, isn't it, for both of you? Okay, good. Well, enough about me. Y'all ready to hear from them? Yeah. Michael, Mackenzie, come on up. Give them a hand. Morning, y'all. All right. Uh, thank, thank you all for coming here and bracing the storm to listen to us ramble on for 40 minutes. Uh, <laughs> means a lot. <laughs> so let's begin talking about our mission trip. So first, probably wondering why did we go all the way up to Idaho of all places? What's that's an even that's a good question. So. Oh, there is. Good. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So, this is a this here shows Christianity throughout the U.S. Down here in the South, there's a lot of uh, uh, Baptists, a little others sprinkled out, Methodists, Catholics, etc. Uh, same with the rest of the U.S. But if you look here at the Idaho and Utah region, it's very deep gray. What is gray? Mormons. <laughs> Uh, so those of you who don't know what the deal with Mormons are, they branched off of Christianity around the time of the Second Great Awakening and became their own thing, basically. Despite, to this day, claiming to be a Christian branch, they do not believe Jesus is God, which is the most important part of the whole thing. Yeah. So they need Jesus just as much as the rest of us do. So that's what we yeah. did. We went out there and we, well, you'll find out. Their thing is, uh, is it working? Um, okay. Their big thing is family. So they think by labor, how hard you work, there's different levels of heaven. So, I mean, they think that we won't make it at all, Baptist. But even them doing the bare minimum, they think they can make it to level one. But there's four stages of their heaven. And it's all by labor, hard working. Workspace religion, exactly. Yeah. So I'll let you tell your story of flying in because I have a different story for that. So no. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So on the way to Idaho, we had easy flying travels. None of our flights were delayed. Everything was fine. We made it there perfect besides my ears popping. But that was my first time flying, but it was fine. It went well. Good for you. Uh, <laughs> so the actual flight for me was A-OK. -okay. I got there at about, <laughs> I think I got there at 11, 10. Yeah. Uh, you know what time y'all got there? Six. <laughs> they got yeah. there a lot later than I did. Uh, I was on a family vacation the week before, so I was already in the Utah region. So. I flew from Cedar City to Salt Lake City to meet with them. I got there a lot earlier than they did, <laughs> which means I had a lot of movies to watch in the airport lobby. But all things considered, it was a fine, it, it, it's nothing compared to what happened at the end of the trip. To me. Yeah. Um, here's the, the thing. plane. <laughs> and so we arrived in Soda Springs. Um, so that first day we were in Soda Springs, it was essentially just telling us about the town and the culture, which is very important when you're doing a mission trip to understand the culture. Um, and yeah, they were telling us a lot of what Mackenzie told us, a very workspace thing, um, Mormonism is. 
Uh, they also told us a few things we should and should not avoid. For example, um, we uh, had to lose our manners. Yeah, we couldn't go. Ah, oh, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Because I, it's offensive up there for yeah, some that reason. Was hard. That yes. Was hard. Yeah. Um, so we had we were told to drop our southern manners. Um, uh, some other things. Uh, we. Ha it's not like we couldn't say the word like words like church and mission to the Mormons. They mean different it's things. A different yeah. Like, you know, here when you say church, the first thing you think of is a Baptist church or maybe some other type mm -hmm. of Protestant church like Methodist. S go to Europe and you say church, they'll think of a Catholic church. S uh, but up in there, you say church, the first thing they think of is Mormonism. Mm -hmm. So we had to be careful with the word church. And same with missions, because missions to the Mormon church also means something different. So that's something you have to understand. But we also got a tour of the town saw a lot of cool things. This here is the geyser that they have in their town. Um, the interesting thing with Soda Springs is the water in the town is naturally carbonated, hence the name Soda Springs. So you take a sip of the water and you feel like you're sip sucking on a penny. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the shower water, everything <laughs> from the kitchen. I mean, you cook it with your food, it's carbonated. Mm -hmm. So it was interesting. Yep. <laughs> Um, there's the river that is also naturally carbonated. And the weather there was, it was perfect. Like the perfect fall day here that we had the one time of the year, it was every day there. Yes. It was like beautiful. It was 80 degrees, no humidity. It felt, mm -hmm. I, I want to live there. Uh, <laughs> um, and then here's Mackenzie and her friend Bethany standing in front of the geyser. That's the geyser, right? Yeah, yeah. that's the geyser. Um, there's the, just keep scrolling. Yeah. <laughs> then the next day we all went to church, uh, there at Caribou Bible Church. Uh, you want to explain mm -hmm. the whole, all right. So I thought it was strange that it was called Caribou Bible instead of Caribou Baptist. And the story behind that was every church in that town until they made Caribou Bible Church was a Mormon church. So it was Caribou, ba Caribou Baptist, but it scared the Mormons away whenever they wanted to leave their church, they didn't want to go to a Baptist church. It was just the stereotypic word Baptist that scared them. But when they changed it to a Bible, they know that they were only teaching straight from the Bible, so it, they were more open to going to it. So that's the reason why they changed it to Caribou Bible. Yeah, they both, both Mormonism and uh, Baptist come out of that same Second Great Awakening movement. And um, there's a lot of disdain towards mm -hmm. the Baptists from the Mormons, so they had to change the name, which is another case of the thing, you know, the culture. We, they, they agree with Baptist, Baptist theology in pretty much every way, you know? Uh, but they had to change that name to Caribou Bible Church for the reasons Mackenzie said, right? Um, we even still, while we were there, they were telling us that, you know, while you're there and you come to a, leave the Mormon church and come to a more Bible-believing church that you lose a lot of your social standing, mm -hmm. right? Um, there are some people, I think they told us, where um, there's one fellow who was a well-respected person in their community uh, who was thinking about, you know, coming to the church, but, uh, you know, if they leave the Mormon church, again, social standing, just, it lowers. Which it's all about their family. Yeah. So when they leave that church, they lose their family. Their yeah. family's not going to come with them. So there was one guy, and he left the church, and that risked him not gaining his ranch that has been in his family. So that was hard. There's so much more than just leaving the church to them. It comes with their family and their whole life that they've grown up with. Yeah. It's, you know, it's just how it is there, you know? Mormon, Mormonism has its grasp tight in the Idaho, Utah region. Um, but while we were the, also there, we... <laughs> Well, we were also there. We went to the pastor uh, Jeff's house uh, for, you know, a get together. They had trampoline there. Here's me choking one of my friends. Michael made me put this in here. That he I did not make you yes, put this in he here. Did. I said take the picture. You were the one who put it in here. <laughs> and there's us all playing cornhole. So, you know, easy days so far, <laughs> you know? That did not last. So. We, camps. Yes. 
So let's get to what we actually did while we were there. While we were there, uh, we were helping them with some kids camps because um, this is a fairly young church. They don't have a youth ministry like we do here. So we were there to help run some church camps and uh, help build them that youth ministry. Um, an interesting thing I found here was they told us not to be forceful with Christianity mm -hmm. because, uh, well, one, Mormons have a idea in their head that they're the quote unquote one true church. So get argumentative with them, they'll think, oh, we're being persecuted because we're the one true church. It's, yeah, it, that's just their mindset. Um, mm -hmm. Another interest, another reason is because the Mormons themselves have a very forceful attitude with their religion, and that's another thing that we're hesitant with, uh, was that. So what essentially this was, was we let the kids have a lot of fun, right? And then at the end, we were telling them, hey, Jesus loves you. And if you want to learn more about this, uh, that Wednesday night at Caribou Bible Church, we had a you know cookout where it was also an invitational, kind of like what we do here a lot with our <laughs> everything. Uh, <laughs> Baptists and their food, you know? Um, and so, yeah, that was kind of the goal of these things, to get people to that invitational and and their families were invited as well. So families. it was kind of like, you know, their kids being loved on all week and then being able to bring their parents in with that and show them what they've gotten all week. Yeah. So here's us setting up. We did two, did it twice every day. Um, and, well, I think it, I mean, I think it went pretty well. Here's us all, I was going to say us all setting up, but it doesn't look like that right now, does yeah, it? Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> Uh, there's another picture. So after. we did a sports with different sports activities and then crafts and then I did reading. So that was what we did for our camps. We did two kids camps and then at night we did a VBS. So we were busy all day. Yes. Um, <laughs> all right. Wednesday. The She had a bunch of stickers at her <laughs> station. So what did those like 10 year olds really want to do? Put them all on my face. That's what they wanted to do. So, as you can see, my face is covered in stickers. Left I a small tan line, uh, <laughs> barely noticeable, but at least that's what you said. Uh, we'll find out later. Um, yeah, so, again, loving on them. Let them have fun. Uh, there's those a picture. were the kids, yeah. Those were the kids who were there. A um, few of them, at least, the ones who I was looking over at the time. And then there's Mackenzie and her friend Bethany again. <laughs> so Dairy Queen over there is called Arctic Circle and it is not the same. It's terrible. <laughs> but I got this blue ice cream and I didn't know, I took one bite and it turned my mouth blue and I had to teach VBS after this. <laughs> so all of the boys took, well besides Michael, took one for the team, took a bite of the ice cream we all have blue teeth walking into VBS. So you can skip. All right. Um, so this is a picture from the Wednesday Invitational. Uh, the chef there, uh, she's a fantastic cook. Uh, I don't remember what her real name is, but they all called her Hatchet. Hatchet. Um, I don't remember what her real name is, though. But anyways, Hatchet, she brought all of her dogs for us all. And so this is us before it started, just playing with the dogs. <laughs> um, but, yeah, there's me again with the dog. It's, is it gnawing on my hand in this picture? I think it is. I mean, there was like 10 of them. There were a lot. There was a the lot. The kids loved them, too. Yeah. Uh, uh, so it's a good thing she brought yeah. them. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, so while we were there, we obviously, like I said, we ate food. It was good food. Again, uh, Hatchet was a great cook. You didn't like it? No. Okay, I thought it was great food. Um, um, and then he did the invitational, um, Pastor Jeff did, and um, I think that was a success, all things mm -hmm. considered. I saw some people, uh, I believe, who, I saw people who were crying and looked like they were having a spiritual mm -hmm. moment. 
um, and it was great. Yes. Um, there was there's one story that one of the people told us. It was a younger girl who was uh, she was crying, and this gentleman went up to him and uh, you know asked what was wrong. And what she said was, um, it must be nice having Christian friends, which just goes to show how much work needs to be done in this community. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, it do, it, we didn't give, like, do large waves in this community, not yet anyways, but, you know, swinging the planted seeds, that's what we were there to do. Mm -hmm. And I think it was a success. Yes. And at the end of this day, we were all, our whole mission team was praying. We were just cutting up and praying in a circle. And then we were getting ready to go back to our Airbnbs because we were leaving for Boise the next day. We'd been here for a week at this point. Yeah. And um, whenever we got back to the Airbnb, I got told that um, the Mormon seminary is right across the street from the church so I can see everything that we're doing. So there was two teenage boys, and they were at the seminary, and they saw us all praying and talking and just loving on one another. One another. And they went up to the pastor of that church and told, asked him what time church started on Sunday because he wanted to start attending because what he's getting taught is fake. Yeah. That's, so that's, the, that's one of the things they told us during that, uh, yeah. you know, that culture day. It's like, you know, the Mormon church, there's a lot of money in it, right? That's how it's such a big influence mm -hmm. in the region. Um, so, but what we lack in that money, we make up for in authenticity, an authentic spiritual experience, which is something the Mormon church lacks. Because again, mm -hmm. they deny that Jesus is God. And <laughs> I think you said this this morning, once you, you take one passage of scripture, you twist it, and then a whole flood of yep. weird ideas come in. <laughs> yep. um, this is our fun day. We had one fun day uh, during the week. Um, so we were out in that uh, Penny Tasting River. Um, we had some canoeing. Um, I was, uh, me and a couple of the other guys were on a raft instead. Uh, this is a, gonna be a fun story. I there's saved the all, day, basically. Yeah, I saved Hero the McKenzie day. here. Um, <laughs> there's all of us. So we were out on this raft. We were about to go through a big thing of rocks. Rapids. Uh, rapids, rapids, l rocks were throughout. Uh, and we were in a raft. So what were we gonna do? Nothing, we were gonna die. Uh, <laughs> until our, our hero comes in and saves the day, Mackenzie. Oh, it was so funny. Yeah, they're, um, when I got them on the rope, their raft went over a big rock and a rock got stuck right in the middle of their raft. So then my kayak started flipping because I'm attached to their raft. So it was so funny. But yeah. we all almost flipped, and yeah, so I pulled them all the way back to the end of the river. <laughs> yeah, so thanks to Hero McKenzie here yeah. for, for saving the day. Uh, otherwise, we'd be having a different story to tell yeah, this day. he would still be there. <laughs> <laughs> and we're hitting the road on to Boise. So it was a four-hour drive. It was it a four-hour drive. Which I slept through most of it. I was car thank sick. Thankfully, she wasn't in that because she really liked taking pictures of me sleeping. You'll see a couple. Um, this was on the way to church. This is okay. Yeah, this was on the way to church. Okay. Where was this? Oh, this was in the beginning, in Orlando, on ah. the way to <laughs> the airport. So one misplaced picture. <laughs> um, I didn't make this. I just want to make that clear. Um, this was us. Uh, okay, this was a Sunday morning. Yeah. Um, this, so, at least for my, like all the guys, the second week we were in uh, Boise, we all were sleeping here in the, in the church we were helping out. Um, so, this church, Boise is the biggest town here in, uh, here Idaho. in Idaho. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Words are hard. Um, it's the biggest town in Idaho. So, on the bright side, there's more than one Bible teaching church there, and this one is actually pretty big. I mean, yeah. had a whole youth building they let us use for sleeping, which was nice. We had uh, got to spend our time sleeping on air mattresses while Mackenzie and the girls got an Airbnb. So it was very nice. We were very <laughs> grateful. I didn't yeah. see their Airbnb, but I, I, I'm guessing it was nice. No, the church was fine. Uh, you know, it was actually pretty pretty nice. There was a ping pong table, foosball table, so 
We didn't get bored, uh, to say the least. Just Dance. There was also Just Dance. Uh, one of the members now has the nickname Hot Wings because uh, he was just that good at Just Dance. Um, <laughs> So yeah, there was plenty of stuff to do while we were there. Um, and Sunday was our, um, Sunday was, you know, obviously we went to church. This is us there. This is in the youth building because we went to the uh, youth group there that was meeting. And yeah, it was a good service. I enjoyed it. Um, next slide. Where was this? Downtown Boise. This was in down, we're skipping all over. Okay. Yeah. Um, one of the days we got to visit downtown Boise, which, uh, which was really good, um, for lack of a better way of putting it. Do you have a better way of putting it, Mackenzie? It was very hot. Yes. Um, Boise is very different in spring, even though it's only four hours difference. Boise is 105 degrees on a good day, and it was extreme. You don't sweat, so it's strange. I described it as being a fish out of water. That's what I felt. I couldn't even breathe. Uh, but, um. Sorry, continue. Very good. So we would walk around. We would do um, prayer walking, and we would walk around for four hours a day and just around neighborhoods and around downtown, just talking to people and praying over the neighborhood. Do you have anything else? Not really, no. Um. I mean, uh, we were. To swap mics. Get a different mic. Get a different mic. Okay. <laughs> Green. Green. Turn it up. Hello. All right. There we go. Uh, that one was working fine. So yeah, keep it. Um, okay. So. I was about to say everything was going right the one day I wasn't back there, but as it turns out, I'm wrong. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. We love you guys. Um, yeah, so it was hot there, like Mackenzie said. On the bright side, there was zero humidity, which means the shade actually meant something. Uh, mm -hmm. So you go into the shade, and it's a 20-degree drop in, in heat, yeah. which felt actually felt kind of nice so yeah that was us walking into downtown Boise this is my group during the while well, we were walking around blocks we called ourselves the party animals because I was always wearing a Hawaiian shirt and a straw hat the whole time so Every naturally single day so naturally day. so naturally I brought the party to the mission field <laughs> yes exactly uh, here's a couple of here are some of the things I saw we went and visited a uh, Mormon church here. Uh, all Mormon churches look exactly the same. And mm -hmm. this is how I found out there was actually one in Live Oak, which I did not know there was. Because they all look the exact same. They have the same brick layout, the same G Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints uh, welcome sign that you can see in the photo. Um, this other thing here is a flower garden that we all were able to go into. Uh, it was a very nice place we met a bunch of a couple of people there uh who we told about jesus it was <laughs> it was really funny in this flower garden there's a computer shop that sells you know uh mouses computers stuff like that we go in and it is someone's house <laughs> michael walks into a man's house <laughs> oh that's not as bad oh that's another story we gotta tell um so yeah we just walk into someone's house and i'm like Am I supposed to be here? But then I just hear someone at, uh, behind the counter say, in a minute, and I hear a dog barking and running towards <laughs> us, and I'm like, am I supposed to be here? <laughs> As it turns out, I was, because, yeah, it was actually a shop and not a stranger's house, uh, although we did walk into a stranger's house before. Uh, we were trying to go to y'all's Airbnb. I wasn't y'all's Airbnb. We went to y'all's Airbnb, but we went to the wrong house. So we walked into a random stranger's house, and Mr. Andy, he walked in and kept going, hello, hello, not realizing that it was a stranger's house. If that was Florida, he had been shot. So <laughs> let's be happy it was here, <laughs> or not here. Uh, and this is the other thing we did. We ran another children's uh, camp in the afternoon this time to 
doing, it, it was laid out the same and it was, again, to help the community. This time it was more so geared towards the adults having one-on-one -on -one conversations mm -hmm. with one another, um, spiritual conversations. And from everything I heard and was told from it, those went well. There was um, one gentleman, he used to be Catholic, but he left the church. Um, and then they there were talking about, talking him into uh, their church, which was a, a Baptist church. So that's good. Always good to see people come on to the Lord. That's always good. Um, okay. I couldn't understand how Michael was sitting like this, so I had to take a picture. It's a comfy way to sit. It was strange. It's a comfy way to sit. Mackenzie and them all made fun of me for this, but this is a good way to sit. Your foot falls asleep after a while, though, uh, but try it out sometime. Um, and yeah. this is a picture of us all in uh, downtown Boise. It's a very blurry picture. There's me in my Hawaiian shirt and uh, straw hat again. <laughs> again, party to the mission field. Uh, here's a couple of things I saw. In Boise, Idaho, there's a community of people known as the Basque people. They come out of Spain. Uh, they don't speak Spanish, weirdly enough, but anyways. They came to the U.S. around the time of the gold rush. So they settled out there in Idaho pretty much, they're pretty much still there to this day. A, uh, you know, they stayed out there after the gold rush because it was good fields for shepherding, which is a good job to have when you don't speak English. Um, and yeah, they have a lot of cultural stuff here. This is a, uh, this is a museum of the Basque that we went into saw this here, which I thought to take a picture of. They are, Spain is a Catholic country, so they came from Catholicism, but, and to this day, I think they said there's a 13% Catholic um, population, albeit nothing compared to the 60% Mormon population, which leaves a sliver for every other religion, uh, including Protestant Christianity, um, but you know, uh, so they all, again, everyone, they all, we all need Jesus. So that's why we were there, to help spread it to them all. Um, you explain this one. What yeah. was this? So this is one of the games that we did with the kids. Uh, me and Ali had to put shower caps on our heads and shaving cream on it, and they would throw cheese balls at our head and see who could have the most cheese balls on their head. And it was pretty gross, but it, the kids loved it. So we did it every day, yeah. that whole week. I, I've, I did it, not, not once here, but once a different time. Uh, let me tell you, it's not fun if you're the one having cheese balls thrown at you. No. Uh, not in the slightest. Um, and then here's the obligatory sleeping pictures. Yeah. Um, thanks, Mackenzie. Yeah. So here's me sleeping at a water ball. I was still holding a water ball. That's impressive. Um, here's me sleeping again. <laughs> this time on the van going to, going to our mission field. <laughs> Uh, and then we have the leaving story. Oh boy, where do we even begin? So, uh, here, here's us at the airport. We the first day. On thir no, on the first day of us leaving, yeah. This was Friday, we were all exhausted, ready to come home, say hi to our wonderful families. Uh, did that happen? No, it didn't, because I'm sure you all remember the craziness that went on with Windows a uh, few weeks back, and it just so happened to be on the day we were leaving. So our flight, after sitting in the airport from 5 in the morning to 12 in the afternoon, got canceled. <laughs> yeah, um, so that wasn't fun. So, but, you know, all things considered, it could have been a lot worse because we got a nice Airbnb where all of us had well, a roof over our heads. didn't have AC. For the first day and a Wait, half. Wait, didn't it? No. You oh, were sleeping. Oh, yeah, I was asleep. I'll explain that story, too. Um, actually, I'll let you have that story. So, yeah. So we got to the Airbnb. It was pretty nice. Um, it was actually the first time I ever saw a record player in person. They had a record player there. It was cool. Yeah, I know. I, I want one now. So take it notes, Mom. It was nice, but there was 17 of us in a three-bedroom house with no AC. Yeah. And I was already sick of them from being at the airport all day, so... I, I was thanks, love yeah. you too. Anyways, um, so yeah, all things 
it, it could have been a lot worse though because other people you know the airbnb market was good that day let's mm -hmm. just say that so people were desperate for a roof over their heads and we we got one pretty quick so i'm mm -hmm. thankful for that um so yeah we were there for friday saturday sunday and then we finally left monday um the whole day saturday for like 12 hours straight was it it was more than that okay for more almost the whole day i was asleep they woke me I up i was at, really concerned they I kept walking up and <laughs> checking his head to make sure he wasn't dead because it was really concerning he didn't even move he didn't wake up to eat to pee nothing he was on the couch they woke me up at 10 out of my air mattress to tell me to get started with the day so i did i ate lunch and then i went back to sleep at noon where i didn't wake up again until like eight and then i went back to sleep uh, to go to, <laughs> for the really rest of the concerning. day yeah I told y'all I was like, we were all exhausted, man. I just, <laughs> it was either going to be in the Airbnb or at my house, one or the other. Um, so yeah, y'all want to tell y'all's flight story now? Yeah. Um, so Monday, I finally got to leave at, I think it was 3 o'clock in the morning. I don't remember what time my flight actually left. I just know I left at 3 o'clock in the morning. And when we got there, um, I think the flight was delayed in Boise. But I finally got to L.A. at 8 o'clock in the morning, and our flight was going to leave at 10. So we waited at L.A. 10 came, no flight. 11, no flight. Kept going on and on. And air airport food is not good, and there's no place to sleep. So I'd, we'd all been up, it seemed like forever, but anyways... They said our flight was finally going to take off. I think it was 8.30 that night when we were supposed to leave at 9 o'clock that morning. So when 8.30 came, we started boarding the flight. They said they couldn't find a pilot because there was going to be really bad weather. But anyways, they found a pilot, and we were boarding the plane. We were so excited. And then as soon as we get on the plane, they tell us we all need to get off because the pilot decided not to. And I just start bawling my eyes out because I was so ready to go home. I'd been in there for over 12 hours, and I was so tired. I mean, we've been trying to go home for five days, four or five days now. So I was crying. You'll see it in a slide coming up. But so we all get off, and we're crying. You can flip to that slide because Mr. Andy's in the back on the phone, and it's funny. Uh, uh, there's oh, another sleeping picture. Yeah, you can go. There's another sleeping oh. picture. Yeah. Uh, I was tired. Uh, we got there at 3 o'clock in the morning, and I, listen, yeah. <laughs> just used my backpack as a pillow and passed out. Uh, on if, that nasty airport floor. Would you rather me sleep standing up? Like. Yeah. <laughs> All okay. right, this is the picture yes. of you crying. So I was crying, Ali was crying, and Mr. Andy, poor Mr. Andy, with seven minors, is on the phone trying to figure out a way to get us home. Um, I don't know how he kept us cool. I couldn't do it. Anyway, so we get off of the plane, and we're all crying, and they finally, at almost an hour later, said that they got us another pilot. So at 10 o'clock, we were able to board the plane, and, well, I found out why they didn't want to fly because I mean we were dropping and I could feel the pilot trying to pull the plane back up I mean we were dropping and coming back up every and it was a five-hour flight the whole entire time and the pilot even came on the intercom and told us just to you know stay still um yeah it was it was hard and I found out later Mr. Andy told us that um, he didn't know if we were gonna make it and he wasn't gonna tell us that in the time being and he said he was stressed out and I'm like, you could have told me I was going to die, you know? Like, but anyways, we made it to... Um, She's probably laughing at that. That's awful. Yeah. <laughs> Joke to cope. I made it to <laughs> Atlanta, finally. And it was 2.30 in the morning. Um, I just was sick from going up and down. But anyway, so that one picture, if you go back, it's... Um, this one? Yeah, that's all of us. You know, we're supposed to be in the chairs, but we all just walk straight to the, our gate and just go to sleep in Atlanta. Um, when our flight finally goes to take off, we didn't have our boarding pass because they were supposed to hand it to us when we got there. And they told us that they were for Jacksonville and not Atlanta. And 
were like, well, the plane took us to Atlanta, not Jacksonville. You know, what are we supposed to do? It was one thing after another. So anyways, the plane, they were about to shut the door, and they were like, you know what, just get on the plane. We'll figure it out. Well, that meant our luggage, we found out, got left in Atlanta and not shipped to Tallahassee, where we were taken to. So um, it was only an hour flight from Atlanta to Tallahassee, so that one was fine. So we made it to Tallahassee. We haven't slept for over 24 hours at this point. I mean, we were exhausted. I don't even remember it. I wasn't even hungry at that point. I was so tired, and that's rare. <laughs> but anyway, so when we made it to Tallahassee, we went to go get our luggage, and it wasn't there. And then um, we get on a van to go home, and the van didn't have no AC. So I'm already sick. And I was just so ready to go home. But anyways, we made it home. I was fine, but it, it was, took five days, and I still ain't recovered from <laughs> it. My story's a lot less adventurous. Uh, we split the flights into two because there's like 20 of us. So some of us had her fun story, and the rest of us had a much less exciting. Uh, we left Monday night uh, um, from... Boise to Dallas, and then from Dallas to Jacksonville. And everything went smoothly, surprisingly. For the first time, and only time, this whole leaving process, nothing went wrong, which was good. Um, even the van ride, I think ours actually had AC. So, yeah, all things considered, I'm so happy I was on the second crew. <laughs> yeah. And j just to sh let y'all know how long hers took, we left 12 hours later than she did. We got there one hour after they did. That's how long she, her craziness lasted, and I'm surprised you're even able to be awake right now. So, so yeah, uh, good job. Um, so other than that ending, which could have, you know, wasn't too bad, all things considered, for me. Yeah. Um, for me. Um, I still think it was a great trip. We saw the Lord do some really amazing things, and I'm happy that the two of us could be a part of it, and I'm happy you all could help us get there with your generous prayer, uh, support, and money, for lack of a better way of putting it, money. Uh, it, it was, I'm, I'm so grateful for everything this church has done for the two of us. Um, both now and throughout our whole lives, so. It's very greatly appreciated. We from, really appreciate it. So from the yes, from the bottom of our hearts, thank you all, and especially thank you all for bracing the storm today. <laughs> um, so we is there any other slides? I think, I think that was the last one. All right, I think this is our last slide. So I'll uh, before I end up praying. Do you want to say anything else? I don't think so. All right, I'm gonna pray us out now. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you have given us all, Lord. Uh, thank you for all these people who braced the storm to come out here and see, a, uh, see us talk about this. Thank you for um, all this great work you're doing out in Idaho, Lord, and thank you for letting me and Mackenzie be a part of that, Lord. Thank you for all the wonderful and amazing blessings you have given to each and every one of us, Lord, and uh, thank you for everything, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>